There we go. Good morning. Good to see everybody here today. God is good. And all the time. Welcome to worship on Palm Sunday. Can you believe Holy Week is now? Like we are stepping into it right now. All right. Uh, several different announcements. First, a big thank you to everybody who came for the work day yesterday. Thank you for coming and helping with that. And a lot of stuff got done. It's amazing what, what is revealed when the, our mountains out here, those mountains of snow melted. There was so much debris and now that's all gone. And that's just a, a little bit of what happened uh, yesterday morning when the property team and others took over. So thank you for that. Um, some sad news, um, if you haven't heard, um, Bob Hyde, um, he, he's been struggling with Alzheimer's for several years, and uh, this week he ended up having some um, brain bleeds, and he passed away early Friday morning. Um, so please keep Shallon and her family in your prayers. Um, Jessie Hyde, who plays for us and sings for us sometimes, she's in high school, that is I think the granddaughter, she's got a lot of kids, grandkids and great grandkids. So it, um, Jesse is somewhere on the family tree. But, um, but anyway, um, his service will be next week, next Thursday, I believe here in, in, in our uh, sanctuary. So uh, please keep Shallon and her family in your prayers. I know it's been a hard week for them. This week we have uh, uh, lots of services. Thursday is Monday. Thursday will be here in the sanctuary. That is the day we remember the Last Supper. We remember Jesus' command to love one another. And so please join us for celebrating that. Good Friday will be outside. So we're going to try to do the, the fire pits again. We keep saying, well, it can't be as cold as it was on Christmas Eve because it was like maybe three degrees, maybe. Uh, if you had your hat on, it was. Uh, but please pray for good weather for this weekend. Also, the Easter event is this Saturday, starting at 10 o'clock. Uh, if you know somebody who has children, please bring them down, because it'll be a great event. We'll have uh, different stations for telling the Easter story, and then, of course, the, an Easter egg hunt, and the, the bunny will be there. And then finally, Easter Sunday is next week. So we'll be 9.30 here in the sanctuary and 10.30 outside. We'll be in the back parking lot. So uh, you need to sign up for the 9.30, but the 10.30 we, we're not doing signups because we think we'll have enough space. Who knows? But anyway, they'll also be live streamed, so you can catch us on the internet as well. Uh, finally, uh, if you have sea glass from your Lenten bag and would like to bring it to be included in some kind of a window creation. We would uh, love to have you do that. There's a bowl in the back, you can drop it. And uh, if, if you also have your pig from your Lenten bag and you've filled it, then uh, you could bring that as well. Uh, you could also fill it online, <laughs> electronically through your bank, you can do that. Uh, Brenda handed me this little scrap of newspaper from yesterday. Uh, Denise Ulazic decided to really embarrass me by nominating me as a everyday hero. So, um, I know, right? So nice. Here I am, pre-surgery, when I could still wear my robe. Uh, so, anyway, it was very humbling to, to see that and to see the other people who are in there as well. Uh, it's amazing what an everyday hero can accomplish. And I know that each of you is an everyday hero in your own way. So thank you. Thank you for making a difference. Those are all the announcements that I have. We do have a video from the the book club. This is a, a, a group of folks who's been meeting uh, since last summer. Uh, and we've studied a lot of different things and uh, we wanted to tell you about what we've studied and then also invite you to our next study, which will start the week after, the Sunday after Easter. Hi everyone. Our Sunday book study group or adult forum thought it would be nice to give you some background as to what we have studied and where we have come over the past several months. What, what influenced our choice of studies started from the George Floyd incident in Minnesota, 
which led to holding our own vigil in the St. Barnabas parking lot. We felt compelled to learn, study, and try to understand through the eyes of those that look different or were born with a different background than us, and then to try to put what we learned into motion to make a difference in this world. We started out with Dear Church by Lenny Duncan. Then I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness by Austin Channing Brown. Then Human Sexuality, Gift and Trust from the ELCA Church Documents. And now we have just finished Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. All of these books have opened my eyes to what is happening around us more than I could have imagined. And I am thankful for this group to be able to have a discussion about it with. In the midst of all of the challenges that we've faced during the pandemic, I have to say that the St. Barnabas Book Group has been a huge blessing to me. Um, as Sally just mentioned, uh, it began after we all we were all shocked by the George Floyd death and uh, the Black Lives Matters protests. Uh, but through the books that we have read and our discussions, it has helped me understand the history behind where we are as a country and as a church. I began to understand the challenges faced by people of color and those with other characteristics that they can't control. And uh, moving forward, I will look for ways to make a difference and stand up for those that have been marginalized in our society. I invite you to join us. The books that we have been reading have taught me that systematic racism has far reaching effects. And though we didn't build the house it was born in, we do live there now. It is up to us to fix the leaky basement of oppression the roof where the shingles of fairness and God's love have fallen away. We have to repair all the structure in between where our sisters and brothers have struggled for their families, their dignity, and at times their very lives. One of the things I've really appreciated about this group is building up trust so that we can be vulnerable about our own confession, our own complicity in the system, and it also share experiences where we've seen racism affect people and hurt people or, or sexism or homophobia, um, just to have a group that listens and supports and encourages has been really uplifting for me. On our racism studies together, we learned a new word and its symbol, which is a large bird looking back over itself while looking back over itself while its feet face forward. The bird holds a precious egg in its mouth, which symbolizes new birth. And Sankofa literally translates, go back and get it or in order to understand our present and move forward into the future, we must know our past. We have all been on our Sankofa journey since we came together to learn about racism in America and its effect on our country and on our culture. As an interesting sidebar, we had this bird symbol, the Sankofa bird symbol has also been spotted on some of our Lutheran documents. Sankofa. Well, you can join us on our next read. We're taking a little break um, and going into to uh, explore our own uh, faith with Dangerous Wonder by Michael Iaconelli. Our read will start April 11th through May 2nd on Sunday evenings at 7 for about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, so we hope you'll consider joining this amazing group on and where we discuss faith and what's happening in our world. Heavenly Father, we come to you thankful for another day, and we thank you for opening our minds and our hearts to this study. Take away any feelings of prejudice over things that can't be changed, like our skin color or our gender, and superficial differences that have nothing to do with what we are inside. Make us aware of our history and its consequences. 
Help us to recognize and to continue to change our state of mind. Awaken us to compassion and empathy. Help us to act when we see unfairness. Help us to not just tolerate our neighbor, but to love our neighbor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So that was a prayer that Kay wrote at the beginning of our last study, and we prayed it every week, uh, maybe modifying it a little bit, but it really um, fit the whole the whole eleven week study in a really amazing way. So um, anyway, the um, uh, wondrous what is it? Dangerous Wonder, sorry, we, we looked at a lot of different ones. Dangerous Wonder is really about our faith. And so if you're interested in learning more about your faith or diving deeper into that, it's just a four-week study, and we would love to have you join us. All right, with all that said, I think it's time to worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Please take a moment for silent reflection. Let us pray. Fountain of living water. Pour out your mercy. People of God, hear the good news of God. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Hosanna, King, blessed are you, our King, who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Even if our voices were silenced, creation itself would rise up to praise you. Hosanna in the highest. The reading is from Luke chapter 19. When Jesus had come near Bethpage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you. And as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. <clears throat> as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road, as he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. Jesus answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. As he came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. Indeed, the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up ramparts around you and surround you and hem you in on every side. They will crush you to the ground, you and your children within you. 
and they will not leave within you one stone upon another, because you did not recognize the time of your visitation from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in a prayer as we center ourselves. Jesus, there is so much that's hidden from our eyes. We do not understand what makes for peace. Open us to your peace. Open us to you. Help us to understand. Amen. So this is awkward. There you all are with your palm branches. You got your palm branches? Yeah, Andy just read from the Gospel of Luke. No palm branches. I know, no palm branches. What the heck, Luke? This is a Sunday that we've called Palm Sunday for nearly 2,000 years, and this Sunday we get no palms. In Luke's account of what happened the Sunday before Jesus died, we get cloaks, we get a colt, and we get a parade. Just no palms. No palms isn't the only part of Luke's account that seems to be off. After the joy and excitement of the parade into Jerusalem, just before he enters the city, Luke tells us that Jesus weeps. Not just like a little pretty cry. Like he weeps. Talk about the highs and the lows. I mean, I guess if we were ever going to read about a Palm Sunday that's off from what we expect or from what we want, this would be the year to do it. The year when everything has felt off, right? But maybe this palmless Sunday is more true to life than the Palm Sundays of our imaginations. As much as we want to remain in the high, As much as we want the hosannas to never end, we know that celebration only lasts so long. We know that sorrow is as much a part of life as joy is. But let's start with the joy. I mean, come on. At least we can have a positive foundation going into Holy Week, right? Luke's palmless Sunday parade is, we are told, made up of Jesus' disciples. Now, we know that Jesus had 12 disciples who followed him around for three years, but we also know that 12 people is not enough for a parade, even a weird palmless Sunday parade. So my guess is that the disciples in Luke's palmless Sunday parade are all those people whose lives Jesus had changed. He'd healed them, or fed them, or he'd changed their hearts. After all, the reading says the crowd was joyfully praising God in loud voices because they'd seen Jesus' deeds of power. Maybe you remember some of those deeds of power. They started with Peter's mother-in-law who had a high fever and Jesus healed her. Then there were all those lepers throughout the three years who Jesus healed, the demons who he drove out for three years. There was a man who was paralyzed, do you remember? And his friends lowered him through the house. They cut a hole in the roof. That's how much they cared for him. And Jesus healed him. There was the woman who was bleeding for 12 years. There are other women who was bent over for 18 years, and both of those women were healed. There was the widow's son who had died and the 12-year-old girl who had died, and Jesus raised them from the dead. Or maybe you remember last week the blind man whose sight was restored and Zacchaeus whose heart was restored. If Jesus were having a parade now, with or without palms, 
I know a lot of us would be spreading our cloaks for him as well. Because we know what Jesus' deeds of power feel like. We know the times we've received his peace or his forgiveness, his grace or his love or even just his presence. We know what it's like to feel broken and we know what it's like to be healed. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here, right? This is not an idle tale that we're just waiting to have happen. We've already lived it. I'd spread my cloak this year for my husband's healing. I'd spread my cloak for those times when I have felt calm and centered, when the world has been full of storms like it has this past year. I'd spread my cloak for those times when love has unexpectedly and overwhelmingly filled my heart and given me strength that I didn't realize that I needed. But even while I see the deeds of power Jesus has done in my life and in the lives of others, I also know the feelings of depression and fear and exhaustion and despair. While I rejoice at healing, I also weep at death. I think Luke offers us this mixed up, messed up, one extreme to the other account of the first Palm Sunday because this is life. Mixed up, messed up, and real. Now at this point you might be feeling like this is not the joyful Palm Sunday uh, that you were expecting. But hopefully you're feeling like Jesus did on that first Palm Sunday. Certainly he soaked up the joy of that parade, but he also felt the pressing need for healing that he just couldn't fill. We're entering Holy Week, a week full of fear and sorrow, betrayal and death. It is a week full of weeping. But don't forget that foundation of Jesus' deeds of power. Don't forget the lives Jesus transformed because he healed and fed and loved and forgave. Those are the cloaks we can take up when the weeping of this world gets to be too much. Those are the cloaks we can offer each other as we go into this week together. So my friends, may we be Jesus' hands and feet. May we be cloaks to this beautiful and broken world. Amen. Okay, and just so you don't think that like I'm totally dissing uh, uh, Palm Sunday, this is the best Palm Sunday hymn ever, and I, uh, I can't tell you how much I missed walking into this song. Also, Aaron sang it, or is singing it for us, and he's always amazing when he sings. So uh, here is Aaron Brewer singing All Glory, Laud, and Honor. i 
with palms before you went our praise and prayer Next year, next year, hopefully we will sing that next year. <clears throat> in prayers of the people, caught between joy and despair, we yearn for the fulfillment of God's desire beyond the brokenness and neediness of this life. We offer thanksgiving for God's presence with us and petitions for the transformation of the church and the world. Glorious God, open the eyes of your church to see you coming to us again and again in new and surprising ways. Open our lips that we may praise you and proclaim your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all places, you reveal your glory in creation and call us to steward what you have made. Make us better caretakers of flora and fauna, all that lives and with whom we share this planet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of all peoples, unite us all in the understanding that no matter what divides us, we can find unity in your love for creation. Give us leaders with hearts for cooperation and mutual upbuilding. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, shower the world with your grace and love Grant us your eyes of compassion and mercy that we reach out to all in any need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Healing God, be with the sick and the suffering, especially the Hyde family, Roger, the Vogt family, Dolly, the Evans and Moulton families, John, Zulika, Kent, Pastor Sarah, Charlie, Sander, Pastor Kara, and Carol. Use your power to bring them healing, comfort, and peace according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Great God, inspire us through our worship of you and move us to do your will and to proclaim your world, your word in our lives and in our communities. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Life giver, pain bearer, love creator, Day by day, you sustain the weary with your word and gently encourage us to place our trust in you. Awaken us to the suffering of those around us. Save us from hiding in denials or taunts that deepen the hurt. Give us grace to share one another's burdens in humble service. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with those around you. Peace.
And so now we think about the times when we offer ourselves to Jesus' service, those times when we spread our cloaks for Jesus or for those around us who need healing. Um, however that is that you have done that this week, I encourage you and, and um, ask you to put those in the offering plate and let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And that's what we do to this day. And now let us pray with confidence in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So Bob, Bob Hyde wasn't one to come to church until just the last couple years when Shallon couldn't leave him by himself. And, you know, you always worry about people and, you know, how are, what's their faith like? And, um, and Shallon said, but, you know, every time we watched worship, he always, no matter what else he forgot, he always said the Lord's Prayer. Such a gift, right? So we practice grace to go in, uh, in these days. We'll have communion on the way out. That way you can hold on to it and take it outside and take your mask off and eat it. For those worshiping with us at home, share communion, whether you have others in your home or not, uh, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Now receive the blessing. You are what God created you to be. Created in Jesus Christ for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.